Good evening, all. Hi, Prince. Hi, Prince Philip. Nice good evening. Here. Good evening. Yes. Good evening. Good to be here, Alexander. How are you doing? Yes. Good. Thanks. Uh, hi, Fran Hi, Francesco. Welcome. To Hello, Philip. Hello, Alessandro. Firstly, Francesco. firstly, we have the first record. Like after three seconds, I start the space. We have the uh, Prince Philip already replied uh, and uh, joined the space. So I think it's the record so far. <laughs> Congrats really? for this. <laughs> yes. Uh, good. We we have also a good day today. I think Bitcoin is above uh, 70k. So many other other times try to break this uh, this level. Uh, we will see if we can reach uh, 72 and maybe new all-time high soon. Uh, Prince Philip, I think first question will uh, for you will be if you can update us on uh, how is doing for you in Gen Gen 3. Uh, how uh, are the new updates uh, and uh, the looking forward? for uh, your job and the job of Gen3. Would be great to hear. Sure, sure. So for those who don't know, Gen3 is a, is a company founded by Samson Mao, and its mission is to accelerate hyper -Bitcoinization. And we provide tools for individuals, enterprises, nation states to engage with a free and, and open-based Bitcoin-based financial system. Uh, we are known as, we have, I guess we have the niche should be known as a nation state adoption uh, com uh, company, Bitcoin only company. And I joined as CSO, Chief Strategic, Chief Strategy Officer back in September 2022. And as I said, our mission is to speed up hyper Bitcoinization and we we know we understand that uh bitcoin is a bottom-up it's a, a approach a strategy it's it's a grassroots effort you can't stop it from uh from doing its thing uh but we also like to look to take a little bit of a look at down from top down so that's why we try and engage with nation states with uh, leaders politicians you know the uh uh company uh, uh, heads of companies and influential people and try to orange pill them i guess and we met since i joined the company since the company was founded we have met uh engaged with several countries some of them including um madeira suriname colombia montenegro uh i guess what else um costa rica uh Liechtenstein, to name a few and our strategy for every country is different we rely a lot on bitcoiners on the ground we um bit we can't just go and knock on 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 a door and i create a, a diplomatic line directly to a president let's say the president of, of some random country and ask them if you want to speak about bitcoin because that's not going to happen more often than not you're just going to be told to uh, to go away no one wants to no one at that level of those that type of uh person person or uh individual are willing or open to be talking to bitcoin yet i say yet because we've seen there's some interesting developments in the united states with trump and other other uh, politicians around the world who are using Bitcoin on the, um, on their platforms, but in general, when you approach a politician to talk about Bitcoin, more often than not, you get the the door in the face. But that doesn't stop Bitcoiners all around the world uh, trying to, um, let's say, orange pill their local elected in official or person in charge and try to orange pill them. And a lot of Bitcoiners get quite far to the point where they come and ask for our help, and we probably first create like a telegram group and then we exchange some notes some um some we exchange what's what, what what's going on what's happening and stuff and if it's uh, possible then we end up maybe having a zoom meeting with the leader or we end up going to the country and having a meeting and i'd say right now there's uh there's some interesting develop developments happening i can't really divulge on 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 uncertain on on much but uh, as you noticed, we had some uh, in, earlier this year, we had meetings in Suriname and we also had meetings in Montenegro and things. So we, uh, there are some interesting developments happening around, around the world and hopefully we'll have some good news later on this year. Thanks for the resume. Uh, very interesting uh, to hear uh, the update. Uh, and also I'm reflecting always uh, 
Bitcoin has no marketing team, but there is uh, plenty of Bitcoiners without being in a Bitcoin uh, company, uh, they are uh, doing marketing. Uh, so th that's great. And also a different level. Some people are more for retailers as a store of value. Some uh, are more uh, for the tra medium of transaction. Some are trying to orange peel a wealthy investor. So uh, that's great. And I think also I find... The give, give, give. Yep. Given the name of this uh, of this podcast or, or spaces, store of value, what's your position on uh, on what exactly in general in Bitcoin? I just uh, Bitcoin as a store of value or a medium of exchange. Ah, yes, I think it will be firstly as a store of value, and once you reach the global yep. store of value, it will become it, it will have a great chance to become a medium of exchange. Uh, personally, I think the Bitcoin store of value is uh, we already won. And we are waiting uh, history to prove that we were we were right. So it's inevitable. Uh, once you reach a global store of value, then uh, there will be a great chance to become a global medium of exchange. And uh, what is yours? I agree. That's uh, that's I agree. I agree with that. Yeah. And on this, uh, in which uh, kind of uh, which type of uh, marketing you are doing for uh, to to nation state? Because also Samsung discussed also about um, Bitcoin mining and then. Uh, medium of transaction store of value or you're focusing on uh, one topic or depends of what the country no asking. no it, it it depends on other countries but um we can i mean, what it's it really yeah as i said depends on the country uh as approaching as a uh, as as a me, uh, medium of exchange as a peer-to-peer peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash is not going to really happen that's not that's something obviously that we would like it to, uh, bitcoin to be in some you know now or in the future but approaching uh, nation states with that option is, uh, is 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 a tough one. I mean, Bukele did it in his country, but he side uh, did it in, um, in side by side with the U.S. dollar. And obviously, the U.S. dollar still has prevalence in in, in El Salvador, but they have access to Bitcoin, and they, he's done a very intelligent thing for that that country. But the El Salvador case study is and example is is an outlier, we believe, and we don't think that's another El Salvador will happen for. Well, we don't know. I mean, never say never, but this uh, anything can happen in, in the next bull run and in the next 10 years over, over a couple of election cycles around the world and anything can happen. So we find the best way to, um, to orange pill nation states or leaders of people is actually through mining. And this is something that we've seen, we've noticed is that some, uh, many countries have actually taken on investments in mining. Uh, some examples include Oman, the kingdom of Oman. Who last year they invested 1.1 billion in Bitcoin mining projects. Also, we found out last year that the Kingdom of uh, Bhutan was be, has been mining Bitcoin for the last five or six years secretly uh, with their hydroelectric cap capabilities. So uh, this is something that we re we know that nation states are already adopting uh, Bitcoin um, mining Bitcoin because if you have access to energy. And it's and you have access to cheap energy. If you're not mining it, then you are, yeah. You're it's 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 not not very intelligent. <laughs> so we find that um, that teaching teaching individuals about how Bitcoin, how mi mining Bitcoin can not only produce money through the proof of work, but it also can uh, actually fix energy and actually make energy more efficient in your um in in your jurisdiction. And as you know, that Bitcoin miners can be plugged in to uh, energy grids where energy, in some instances where the energy is, uh, is the cheapest, they'll buy, they'll, they'll create a power purchasing agreement where the energy has been wasted or stranded. Therefore, they will then solidify that grid. And so when there's stress on that grid due to, um, let's say, um, a, a cold, cold weather or, or hot weather when, when there's more, more need, need for energy, then the Bitcoin miners can actually turn, be turned off and the electricity can be sold back to the grid, therefore reducing rolling blackouts. Um, we find that case studies like this, like also like the, the, in, in Texas where they, where they burn, instead of burning off the flare gas when drilling for oil, they actually tap that energy and use it to mine Bitcoin. Uh, we find those sort of examples are very powerful when, when speaking to nation states because everyone is, uh, is always in need of, uh, of energy. Energy is what we need to develop and without energy, we won't develop. We actually will regress. And this is what beauty, beauty about Bitcoin is it makes us, due to its um, incentive structure, it makes us search for the cheapest form of energy in order for the Bitcoin to be uh, to be more of a, um, in order for the for the cost of the mining to be uh, to be effective, 
So in that way, it's very, as I said, it's very effective as a way of orange peeling people. And you'll see, I think you'll see more countries adopting Bitcoin uh, mining as part of their as part of the, as part of their strategy. And this, we find that if we go in as a um, as a partner with them, or they partner with um, with miners, then uh, with with a, if 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 a state a, a a public authority starts mining, then they will obviously be kinder to Bitcoin overall. And this is where the top down approach actually can help Bitcoin, is that they will actually view Bitcoin as pref as prep as something um, good. And they can actually then, um, with the with the proceeds of the mining, with the revenue from the mining, they can use that to to fund local infrastructure projects or I don't know anything, education or something like that, and therefore reducing taxing their citizens and stuff. And everyone's a winner. And at the end of the day, they'll look at Bitcoin preferably, and they'll end up regulating it better. And they might even regulate it properly, understanding the difference between Bitcoin and the rest of the other cryptos or shitcoins. I like to know them. Um, we. Also, we can do other clever financial instruments with Bitcoin. I mean, we can create like a Bitcoin bond. Um, for example, this is what Samson created for El Salvador, which hasn't come to fruition yet. But a Bitcoin bond, I think, will be a particular financial product that will, uh, that will be prevalent in the future. It makes a lot of sense. It's really quite, it's really quite an easy structure. Let's say you have a billion dollars investment and you go, you buy... If you use half of that, so 500 million into buying Bitcoin itself, and the other 500 million, you go into buying um, infrastructure for some mining facility or for improving some mining facility, uh, for improving some energy to, to mine Bitcoin. And let's say you have a 10 year duration, and over the 10 years, you pay out uh, coupons, let's say about 5 or 6% a year. Which are usually, which are from gener uh, which is usually generated from the proceeds of the actual mining um, mining of Bitcoin, and by the end of the ten years, you pay out the the nominal value of the of the bond, which is the appreciation of the Bitcoin itself. And so you can imagine that's going to be quite an appreciation. And on top of that, you've invested in a project that's helped to improve the energy um, structure infrastructure of a certain area. And we like to make the, open this up to locals to invest. So this is, I mean, we haven't done this yet, but this is how we envision uh, a, a Bitcoin back, back bond. It's not just a, a financial product only uh, only available to the elites or to the to those institutional investors, but make it as uh, as cheap as you know, hundred, two hundred dollars a unit or to buy in. So locals and have it um, first auction off to locals, so they can be investing in their own future of their own energy structure, uh, energy grid. So as you can see, when people start to understand what Bitcoin can do, they will uh, they will like to invest this sort of money. And the return is that you're actually getting Bitcoin back plus investment into your and, and pro, um, development in your in your jurisdictions. So it's a win win for everyone. Yeah, I see um, offering um, uh, to a government uh, the possibility also to mine and to leverage on the ESG, ESG angle is very smart because uh, it also uh, gives uh, to these policy makers uh, um, the VC some visibility. They they are uh, regulating, they, not regulating, but uh, they, they they are doing something. You know, it's uh, um, they, they are taking care of their country, so they are making it more, more greener, uh, etc. It, it's it's very good. It's working out. Um, I want to ask you. Oh, 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 oh. Although so I would like to comment on ESG, I think the actual the actual vibe uh, stra um, strategy ESG those letters are not doing too well right now, and I think people are realizing that uh, it's a bit of a farce in in the asset management world, and it's just uh, it's a bit of, of greenwashing going on. And ESG was also very anti Bitcoin now, but then KPMG last year came out with a report that uh, that saying that basically Bitcoin is the ultimate ESG tool. And so I think the ESG narrative has been destroyed by people waking up to it, waking up to the fact that it's a bit of a joke. I actually used to work in ESG once, and I kind of see right, still right through it, especially after I learned I study Bitcoin. But now, even now, as I know more about Bitcoin, I realize that ESG investment is just, uh, is yeah, it's 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 doomed for failure. So 
So I just wanted to put that out. Sorry, you can you can ask a second. No, no it's, 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 it's true because uh, um, it's also it, they didn't say it's dead, but uh, uh, they say that um, money Bitcoin money is, is not bad right after the ETF approval. So we saw it real time by January, February. Yeah, exactly. So that's uh, it's not an addition, <laughs> but it's an addition which uh, will be the um, the gathering room for uh, uh, then the shift to 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 happen uh, one day. And uh, very soon, I, I believe. But uh, um, given you um, also have a financial background uh, and uh, also the dynasty, uh, um, which uh, gives you many, for sure, many insights we we don't have. Um, do you think uh, what's what what's the the relationship between the establishment in a certain country, you know, um, and uh, the the markets, the banking system, the policy makers? Because um, um, talking about Bitcoin, do you think that uh, uh, the adoption, which can happen, as we discussed before, as a bottom-up or top-down approach, and it, it's, a, it's, a, it's good to focus on both and yeah, try from both uh, uh, angles uh, um, to reach a target, but do uh, you think that the politicians, uh, if uh, the store of value uh, will uh, adoption will happen from the bottom, from the uh, citizens, from the population, uh, that could influence uh, the policy and the view of the uh, general the, of the government, and mm -hmm. uh, and or uh, or, or uh, is is that impossible? In your opinion, because uh, the mining and the store of value as a uh, um, allocation asset allocation of the government the balance sheet uh, that's a decision of the government, and the citizens don't have uh, much uh, to say. But uh, uh, do you think a network effect can spread uh, in a country? Uh, from the bottom when Bitcoin reaches uh, um, the six figures uh, and people uh, uh, believe in it and they can, can contaminate them. Do you think it's possible? I think, yeah. Well, I think the bottom-up approach of well, the, the natural um, the natural nature of oh, the, na the its natural form is that it's, it's a grassroots bottom-up uh, um, um, phenomena, I, you could say. That it's, it's unstoppable. And even if governments try to shut it down, you'll see what happened in China in 2021 when they tried to shut down miners, with the, which was actually ended up to be a good thing for Bitcoin because 60% of the hash rate was uh, was was concentrated in in China, and that ended up making Bitcoin more um, decentralized. Uh, if the difficulty adjustment readjusted downwards by record amounts, and all of a sudden people who were priced out from from mining were able to plug their machines back in, and uh, all of a sudden. Bitcoin became this more decentralized and it was like you cut off the the, the, the head of a, of a of a snake and 30 other heads appeared out of the way it was be it was beautiful so it's the same thing with regulation as well I mean you try to regulate code it's it's impossible you regulate information people will just go around it you try to regulate lang a Bitcoin it's like trying to regulate language it's it's just impossible it's just I'm not impossible it's tyrannical I'd say but they can they can try and do it but people will always find a way so there you have seen some countries some some politicians trying to uh well not trying they have effectively banned bitcoin around the world but uh, it's always it's always gonna it's always gonna seep through people are always gonna use it um in black or gray markets uh i think the question is which countries are gonna be adopting it quicker and it's not gonna be thanks to their leaders or or um or the politics. I think it's just thanks to the economic situation, uh, or or or, uh, or the, the 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 fiat conditions of those countries, and so that's why you see high adoption rate in um, in countries like Venezuela, Nigeria, Lebanon, um, Argentina, and places like that. So I think where those who understand that money, that uh, what I say money, fiat which is a perversion of money is uh, is is understood that it will eventually blow up and they're experiencing you know 20, 10 uh two figure three figure uh, four figure inflation annually then obviously bitcoin is very appealing to them so you will see more adoption in those countries and even if leaders try to stop bitcoin from from being used in those countries it's impossible but i think you'll see now uh, in the next 10 years i think i mentioned this before that um, that po politicians will start to see that people that, that that the fiat system is crumbling within before our own eyes. That the the debt itself is becoming unmanageable, 
and they can't hide it any further. They can't create enough other catastrophes to to to, to warrant more printing um, of the debt because in order remember in order to service that debt, they have to create more debt. So the thing is just a self fulfilling um, nightmare. Uh, so I think politics. Um, politicians are starting to realize this and then will jump onto the Bitcoin bandwagon. And I believe they will, some of them will be, will, some of them will, will use it because politicians are selfish and they will just use it because they, they were trying to get some votes. But there'll be some good genuine politicians birthed out of this fiat nightmare who will use Bitcoin as their, their flag, I guess, their, um, their, uh, I said their flag, their, uh, their, their vessel for, for progress and change. And so over the next 10 years, you might see over the next like 10 years, you'll have a, of an average of about two election cycles, two democratic election cycles. And I think you'll see that you'll see a lot more, pe- a lot more politicians using Bitcoin on their platforms. And we saw some interesting developments in the States last, uh, last was it the week before last when Trump based, uh, made a U-turn on Bitcoin because Trump was, was very, always very USD um, favorable and very anti-crypto. But two weeks ago, he decided to accept donations in uh, in crypto, Bitcoin. Um, he hasn't perfected it. They have problems actually accepting. Apparently, they had issues with Coinbase or whatever. I can't really go into those details. I'm not too sure what exactly what happened. But one thing he said, which was really interesting, is that a former president and what could be very much, well, hopefully could be the next president of the U- of the U.S. He said uh, he mentioned the world's word safe custody in a positive ma- manner. And I thought that was really interesting. And on top of that, he did say that we will protect your big, uh, Bitcoin's plural, that was quite funny, from Elizabeth Warren and her goons. So he's obviously been taught that from someone. It could be his son. Maybe his son is a secret Bitcoiner. Maybe he has an anonymous a, a Bitcoin account somewhere. But uh, he's been taught that, uh, that, that Bitcoin is, is an unstoppable force and you will have to adopt. You will um, have to be kind to it because at the end of the day, if you won't, people are uh, people being waking up to the fiat system crumbling, and people are going to choose Bitcoin. You see now, it's it, thanks to its institutional adoption, thanks to ETFs and, and the likes, thanks to pension funds now adopting it, that people aren't are are are, are actually educating themselves more about the values of Bitcoin, and so. I don't know where I'm going with my answer, but what I'm trying to yeah, what I'm trying to say is I think yeah, you're going to see a big a big surge of adoption in, in over the next uh, few years, and I think in those hard stricken places where like Niger- Nigeria and Venezuela, it's already happening and it's only going to accelerate further there. But in the developed world where there's less need for it, your your um your countries with less inflation, I think you will see some acceleration happening there. But um, in general, may, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know how to answer that question. To that. I just rambled on there. Sorry. <laughs> no, no worries. It makes sense we're gonna, because um, it's not a secret that uh, politicians usually uh, change their mind after they have evaluated the polls. So they put forward some poll and then uh, they check it out, see well, what, what happens, and then they uh, change their position. So that could be a, a loop uh, of adoption coming from, from the bottom up uh, this way, I think. Yes, yes. And uh, not only how much we have adopted, but I think also the trend is really uh, relevant. Also, as uh, we was mentioning before, Trump, four years ago, when he was asked about crypto, he said, I am a fan of the USD dollar and the, only the dollar, no crypto. And now saying this, uh, we see the same as uh, institutional, also institutional world. They are, if they are still against Bitcoin, they are in a different way. Also from the ETF, um, the CEO from Bitwise, they were he was saying two years ago they were saying no, we don't we don't treat this, uh, we, we don't talk about crypto, we don't talk about Bitcoin and anything else. Now if they some they became favorable, some are neutral, but even against is a different tone to be against. They are saying oh maybe it's too volatile, it's not anymore, it's used by criminals or uh, many other misconceptions. So the trend is both, yes. Basically, everyone at some point was anti-Bitcoin until they until they studied it or figured it out. It's quite. Yes. I was anti-Bitcoin. Yes. I mean, because everyone was, including <laughs> everyone including Michael naturally. Taylor. It, uh, we are yeah, exactly. Yes. Including yeah, exactly, exactly. Until you just study a bit more, until you realize, until you use some of some 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 rationality, some logic, some reasoning, and then you realize, oh, okay, yeah, I get it now. 
but that's obviously uh, um, that, that realization is different for everyone. So that's why some of us here, most of us here, obviously realize that uh, much earlier than others. So there's always going to be people that are publicly saying, well, yeah, you can see like Jamie D- Diamond, Diamond, who will strategically probably is saying maybe in 2017 that Bitcoin is is bad. Jamie D- Diamond being D- Diamond being the uh, the CEO of uh, of, 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 of uh, JP Morgan. But he's only trying to do that to try and suppress the price so he can get probably more. <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of manipulation. A lot of <laughs> but a lot of these guys understand what Bitcoin is and, and will do everything to try and stop it from, from, from adv- accelerating, advancing. But uh, they will not, they, at the end of the day, you can't do anything about that. So it, that's what's the beauty of Bitcoin is it's unstoppable. Yeah, the, uh, totally. Uh, also, all Bitcoiners are uh, like comfort, uh, confident on this. And... Uh, I also think at one point there will be this inflection point where we go from maybe gradually to suddenly. Like no one wants to be in the first row. For example, years ago, if you were a financial advisor recommending Bitcoin and Bitcoin goes down, you will risk your career. But uh, as uh, no one wants to be in the first row, no one wants to be also in the last row. If we reach an inflection point where uh, it will be agreed that uh, every investors should have three five percent in bitcoin i think there will be kind of a bitcoin rush similar to the gold rush in california 150 years ago but it will be global and it will be faster uh, what do you think of course uh, you yeah you'll see game theory that's yes. one of the things about bitcoin is it really highlights what a game theory um how how uh how we uh we yeah we we, we this is why what one thing we're trying to do at gen 3 is even though we might not get anywhere with a conversation and that con- conversation might not come to fr- uh, any sort of substance in terms of adoption. It does create that, uh, gives that marketing to Bitcoin and, and you, and then you see, Oh, look, so-and-so that look, they're, they're talking about Bitcoin. So that then you'll have other countries want to look over and say, Oh, look, so what, why are they talk? Can we talk about Bitcoin? So you'll create that, uh, that, uh, I guess it's, um, it's a it's a social proofing of it, and that's why it's good to try and get as many voices, as many influences out. Uh, influences, I mean, in the good sense of the word, influences. You know, proper influences, business influences, as people with influences that have uh, that are of, that do stuff of substance to talk about Bitcoin. And then you see now with um, El Salvador that that has actually created a ripple effect of uh, um, this game theory playing out in itself that the countries surrounding El Salvador are all wanting, or not wanting, but are all now interested in Bitcoin. Uh, We've had more meetings around in those countries than we have in other countries. Maybe also because that's due to the fact that um, Latin America has been suppressed by the US dollar and IMF policies for, for... more than most most areas of the world but the countries are looking at and we've spoken to politicians are looking towards El Salvador and thinking we could have that you know they've managed to turn themselves around from being one of the most dangerous countries in the world to actually one of the safest and most progressive countries in the world progressive in the right sense of the word progressive um it's it's incredible so yeah you don't want to be the last one in this in 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 this in this uh, in this race in this game and there will be a point where it will take off very suddenly and it will have that S, you know, we'll be in that vertical part of the S curve of, of adoption. And do you think we'll be like in the next maybe 18 months or uh, more uh, down the road? Um, I think more down the road. I, I think that this bull run hasn't even got started yet. If you look at retail in- interest, like, you know, Google searches uh, and those sort of no indicators, it hasn't even reached to. It hasn't touched where it was back in 2021 when when it, went, it was at the last peak, um, last market um, cycle peak. Uh, the, re, the, the what we're seeing right now is obviously institutional and intelligent money going into it, and there's been a lot of aggressive buying by ETFs and and a lot of institutions. We we have our OTC in Jan three where we sell Bitcoin to uh, to high net worth individuals and 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 people. Um, to, 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 high, to let's say Wales and we're not what, the only ones doing this but uh, many OTCs have opened up around, around the world uh, and everyone is saying that they're seeing high demand of a lot of people buying a lot of institutions and, and wealthy folk buying Bitcoin and it's the, the demand for it is insane right now and it's not currently reflected in the price so yeah it's, 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 it's uh, 
I think I think you know, the adoption. I think the retail mania is going to come in soon once it goes into the, I think into the into the six six figures. But even then, uh, actual adoption, you know, um, uh, currency adoption, um, legal tender adoptions. I don't think we'll see that for another. I mean, at the end of the day, we, Bitcoin, as we, we talked about this, that's why I asked you what your opinion was, um, Alessandro, what is it, given this name of the show, if it's a store of value or, or a means of exchange. I think I think people are just going to adopt it as a store of exchange. I mean, sorry, store, store of value um, now. And the the currency side of it is going to happen much, uh, much, much later on, I believe. Um, so, yeah, it's... I think, yeah, I think, but over the next ten years, I think you'll see a lot of a lot of countries, as I said before, adopting it in different ways and being kind about it. But you will never see fiat disappear uh, so quickly. I don't think. I think fiat will uh, will still be there, but who knows? Maybe fiat backed by Bitcoin will be a thing, which I'm not really a support of. But uh, I guess it would it would help to uh, to um, mitigate the 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 uh the debt um bubble i guess yes uh, that's why we have also our uh, our show uh, called our podcast called bitcoin as sort of value because uh, francesco and me believe both uh, sort of value is the narrative that by far it's much more important and is also the more interested one as, at least for the new joiners uh, those who join it so far i think they join for different reasons some more for uh, medium of exchange some more fully for um, uh, self custody freedom uh, that is also important but from the class of 2024 25 26 uh, it will be even more in uh, in sort of value uh, so that's why the, mm -hmm. the narrative that uh, we should we should push we, we are uh, trying to push on provide good content like influencer in a good way is it, yeah bringing... at, at the end of the day yeah Sorry, at the end of the day, it's it's, it's all weakness. I, for where I live in Serbia, as a, as a medium of exchange, it's not accepted hardly anywhere or nowhere really. But as a store of value, it's it's you know it's regulated. If I want to exchange it back to fiat, obviously I have to pay uh, capital gains tax. I think that's terrible. But I'm not going to do that. I'm using it as a store of value because I know that one day policy will change on it, and I transact in my day to day with fiat because I have no choice. But I um, save in Bitcoin. It's the obvious intelligent thing to do, and if I did something else with it, with, with my money in terms of try to save it in other in other products, I'd I'd uh, I'd, be, I'd be losing out. Basically. So yeah, <laughs> it's funny that we all think the same, but other people they think that uh, we, uh, there is uh, like something wrong with us because uh, when they ask me, but when you sell bit, when will you sell Bitcoin? Meaning, uh, we, for to buy another asset for investment, I say always, but sell for what? Like for, for for stocks, for real estate, for bonds, like no way. Uh, the only option will be to trade Bitcoin, maybe for good and services, but later on, um, this will be. Yeah, exactly. Yes. At the end of the day, yes, it, that's 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 exactly. Uh, 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 that I some people some people will 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 won't get understand it's uh it's it as a store of value and they see bitcoin as a me medium of exchange but then when they get into bitcoin they realize that it's not actually a very good medium of exchange unless they start using lightning and stuff so it's quite confusing i see why it's quite confusing for a lot of uh for um for a lot of first time users and, ad and adopters of bitcoin but i think once you realize that that uh that once you buy bitcoin and you and then once you understand the 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 the, cons, the whole idea of, of being so, uh, uh financially self sovereign and you you take your you take your bitcoins and maybe into cold storage and have your own key you you you, you definitely have your keys and then eventually run a node and 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 then verify your uh, your 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 keys over using a node then you'll start to understand what bitcoin is really about and i think it will take time for people to get to that but at the end of the day i mean sorry i'm kind of diverting the conversation a bit over here but i think at the end of the day the people that live today are very indoctrinated by by the fiat system and i think they won't probably a lot of them a lot of them will no coiners or people who just reject bitcoin altogether probably won't like the fact of having to uh, take responsibility of your finances and not have that that uh, I wouldn't call it a cushion I call it a, a bank looking after you but a bank that doesn't actually hold your wealth but just pretends it holds your wealth and if there was a bank run on it uh, there would uh, no one would actually get all that money out at the same time 
but either way people people depend on 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 that third person storing your wealth and i think it's a it's a step too far for a lot of people that they've been cushioned by by the fiat by by the by the perverse fiat um incentive structure that has made us all into debt a lot of us into debt animals um existence and it's uh, and it's made us uh, sloppy and it's made us um uh irresponsible and we said like we and it's turned us and it's made us not really value our freedom any uh, our freedom so much so i think you'll find a lot of people won't want to 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 to, to have you know have hold their own keys i think that's too that's too uh too dangerous almost so i think but then the, there's going to probably be a next generation of of, of us that well want that more like ourselves now the 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 big uh, you know the bitcoin maximalists that, that that have understood the need for it and as bitcoin grows more in value and 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 in education and acceptance and more in adoption more and more of us will start to strive for 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 what for bitcoin in its purer form which is um is uh financial self-sovereignty but between now and then, I think the idea is, is trying to onboard as many people on Bitcoin as possible, and you'll have to probably end up using layer two, maybe whatever layer three is, solutions that don't really require the the, the, the storage of your own private keys. So I think, yeah, I think over time, Bitcoin will get to to its uh, its its uh, old, uh, ultimate goal as, uh, as 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 individuals all become self sovereign, financially self sovereign. But between now and then, I think as people as we are still um, I guess I'm repeating myself. Still, uh, still feeling the effects of the indoctrination of fiat. Then that's, it's not going to happen for a while now. Yeah, I mean, um, it's also um, uh, the fact that the store of value um, has always been before uh, uh, medium exchange uh, is clearly visible in on the history of money, ranging from shells uh, um, to uh, spices uh, uh, to gold as well. So uh, that's uh, the. The history of Bitcoin is a uh, written already a written part, but Bitcoin has also a technology mm -hmm. layers on top, which uh, can uh, enhance and speed up uh, the adoption in ways we uh, have yet to see. Uh, however, I was just reflecting on the fact that uh, how important is uh, the math behind Bitcoin to validate it and to the eyes of uh, uh, the people and to make it uh, perceived uh, as valuable. If you think that. Uh, um, we they they they, they see the secured by a big number no so and um, uh, they will we're talking before about the inflection point so to to, to what, what is this inflection point where uh, the venezuelan people uh, ditched the bolivar nobody wanted anymore so there was a, a certain range of inflation a certain threshold which uh, after that uh, nobody uh, at the fate anymore in that currency. So it's all a matter of number, but not a number uh, by itself, but uh, the relationship between the, the number and the, how the, the human being perceived the, the, this number according to our reasoning uh, abilities. And that's uh, mm -hmm. uh, really interesting because uh, as um, the co-founder of uh, Apple said uh, Bitcoin is mathematical purity, and the more we dig deeper, the more we can grasp uh, uh, these uh, outstanding features. I wanted to ask, uh, uh, do you think, uh, given uh, maybe uh, about your dynasty, or, and uh, maybe you, you know, you knew a lot of uh, very powerful people around the world, of course, maybe in some dinner or events, and some conversation maybe, do, do you think that? Uh, uh, th there is uh, this incentive uh, uh, from uh, the establishment uh, if a bottom up approach uh, can
carried out, brought uh, up by the store of value uh, in narrative uh, uh, goes uh, rises, then um, there will be less incentive uh, for the ruling class to try to fight Bitcoin as opposed to uh, stay in power and uh, agree uh, to um, onboard it at least a bit. Mm, I mean, it depends what, in what countries and what, uh, I say countries in the European Union that form parts of another organization, or part, countries that are part of a, some other global club or like uh, like the NATO or so forth, where they have, um, let's call it uh, global interest, then I think I think they will, they, you'll find that they will have the most um, um, resistance to Bitcoin and its bottom-up approach. Um, I think in general, Bitcoin is a threat to a lot of the uh, of the uh, elite. You know, to uh, the uh, the people. Who, I want to. I want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but you know, the people that uh, the things that that that, that created uh, the Federal Reserve and Jekyll Island in 1913, and you know th that sort of stuff. <laughs> I think there's going to. I think you know, the, we uh, Bitcoin is a complete threat to that because obviously Je what happened on Jekyll Island was done to uh, to to, uh, to, um, to to extract more wealth from uh, from it, from people. And do it in a uh, in a very uh, sly sly way, but then as we as but then it takes a sly and roundabout way, as um, Hayek said in that famous interview of his. That it would I can't I can't remember the exact words, but he said like the only way we can actually stop this um, fiat des uh, nightmare is is by 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 some strategy or something that. That will happen in a slight and roundabout way, and that's what Bitcoin is. So, in it's they, they can't stop that, and I keep on re repeating that. So, um, so the top-down approach, I think you'll see, I think you'll see gov uh, countries that are more independent, that are not part of any of these global organizations, uh, adopting it quicker. I think you'll find monarchies. I'm not saying this because I'm uh, I'm part of royal family. I think you'll find absolute monarchies adopting it quicker. I think because it, ties in with their low time preference um, governance models. Um, I think you'll find some, um, yeah, I think, no, it's, it's quite, a, it's quite a strange, I think Bitcoin, uh, it's, Bitcoin is going to change the, our, our, the way that we view politics and our governance model. It's going to change the way, we, it's changing the way we view money. It changes the way we, do, we view economics and everything. And it's made, it's turned me, for example, into an Austrian economist. And I never knew, I never knew what Austrian econo what Austrian economics was until I, I learned about Bitcoin or until I actually figured out that what Bitcoin really was in, 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 19, in 2020. Having first bought my first Bitcoin in 2017, so I think a lot of us are going to be really educated on um, on on the benefits of of human action, of natural order, and I think those 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 countries that have uh, governments models that are more in line, that have less states and more more uh, um, let's say more uh, free markets, are the ones that are going to benefit the most if they if if they are kind of, and they start to regulate or regulate Bitcoin in the proper way, which is basically let it do its thing and regulate the shit out of shit coins because those are all securities at the end of the day. It is uh, similar to uh, what happened uh, centuries ago when uh, China and India in the 17th century, they were, so at that time there was more uh, gold and silver used. And then when they were banknotes, so were um, kind of uh, outdating silver because uh, they were divisible. China and India remain in silver too long while the West world moved to gold. And then is also one of the reasons why the West world went ahead. And this will be the same, like the country that adopt Bitcoin and not only a Bitcoin system where the money supply is limited, the right incentives, a lower time preference will thrive more. Versus right. It's China has ended up, I think, in its history, in its... Uh in its long history has ended up shooting itself in the foot twice economically. I think, as you said, once was because they ended up adopting the silver standard. I think the next, uh, the other time they, 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 they shot themselves in the foot is, because, is, the, is that, they, um, that they had a lot of um, 
mercantile trading that happened, a lot of uh, trade that happened on their borders, on, in, in their land. So a lot of ships would come in and out of China for, for trade. And they decided to, to clamp down on that and they ended up destroying their economy because of it. So I think the third time they'll start to destroy their economy is, is, their, um, is right now because of their... I mean, I'm not, I don't know China very well. I've never been there. I, 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 I wish the best for China. But I think right now, I think with the, they're, 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 they're quite tyrannical when it comes down to it. And they're, they're, no, they're banning Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining approach. It's going to be another economical disaster for the country with the most, or at least the second amount to most of the people in the world. So at the end of the day, Bitcoin is still happening. It's still, it's still transacting in China. People are still mining it in China. But you know, as I said, you can't really stop Bitcoin from doing its thing. But uh, you can, ha you can, you know, if you really want your country to develop, to, to develop, then you got to let Bitcoin do its thing because it's uh, Bitcoin is the best. It's it's the best form of money that's ever been discovered, and it will. If you don't adopt it, if you don't um, go with it, then you will lose out. We will see how how it will play in the next years, and also as you said, there will be game theory. Once we have maybe a big country uh, recognizing uh, in a significant level, then we have also other uh, countries. I wish it, I wish it was China. Mm -hmm. Really, I really, really wish it was China because of their because of how many you know. I wish it was China or India because of the hum, of their population size. I say China because it will show that a tyrannical uh, communism can be turned around. And I would say India because it's meant to be the biggest democracy in the world. And we all know the, uh, the shortfalls of democracy that's, uh, that they really need it. Those two countries really need it out of most of, out of, um, out in, in, in this world. I mean, we all need it. But those two countries, given that they hold about two and a half billion people, it would be it would be a success for humanity if they ended up adopting and uh, everyone had to not had to but uh, had the ability to use Bitcoin freely. It would be it would be a win, huge win. Yes, two point five billion. It's uh, it's massive. Like in the West world, we are three hundred k, three hundred thirty million in the US plus maybe three hundred million in in Europe. So one fourth together, yeah. one fourth. Yeah, exactly. Then uh, China and India, India together. Exactly. I think a very good point on also on the Austrian school economics. It was the same for me. Uh, and I think for many Bitcoiners, uh, we, before studying Bitcoin, I, I didn't even hear about the uh, Austrian school of economics. I didn't even know. And uh, I think also we all came to realization how important is money, while uh, people think, okay, but it's just uh, something to transact, uh, while in reality it's the key driver of a society. And I think it's one of the key discover uh, when a person goes is going uh, deep into the rabbit hole. The importance of money for uh, for a society. It's crazy going in down the, the 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 what is money rabbit hole. It's something that they don't teach you. They don't want to teach you. And it was great when I first went down that rabbit hole properly was uh, when I read um, the Bitcoin Standard by Safina Moose and. That also introduced me to a lot of other topics. I mean, it's a fantastic book. It's quite a heavy read, um, but it also introduced me to, uh, to, 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 to the low time preference philosophy as well, which is beautiful. I mean, it's and introduced me to the uh, importance of uh, individual property rights or property rights in general. So uh, it's, it's amazing how, what Bitcoin does to you. <laughs> Totally, it's all... it actually made me. It, it made me. Sorry to interrupt you. Yes. It made me into more of a monarchist than than I was before. Uh, <laughs> it actually real. I actually realized that. Uh, well, I not realized, but um, it. I you know. I thought, given that I was that uh, okay, the monarchy in Serbia is, is was abolished, and I say Serbia. It was the last time it was a monarchy it was Yugoslavia, and that was nineteen forty five when it was abolished. If the monarchy returned today, it'd be Serbia, but. Um, uh, I believe it. If 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 it would if it would return, it would be a constitutional monarchy, so similar to what what you have in all in in all in all the European models, which they have uh, they have um, little to zero power. It's just more of a ceremonial thing, and I thought that was beautiful that ceremonial thing because that adds that's good for tradition, that's good for uh, customs, that's good for um, for uh, for family values and all that sort of stuff. But uh, then I then then I studied more about Bitcoin and realized that actually uh, monarchy in its absolute form, which is something I don't I gotta be careful um, promoting in this country because people see it as 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 <laughs> to see absolute monarchies more closely linked to um, dictatorships. But 
you know, then you could, if you if you really dig into it, actually, um, yeah, dictatorships are pretty horrible, but they have no succession succession plans apart from the one one example is North Korea. But if you look at absolute monarchies around the world, and <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm looking directly at uh, the Arabian Peninsula, so the countries like Oman, like Bahrain, like Kuwait, <coughs> sorry, like United Arab Emirates, um, like Qatar. They all have one thing in common. They're all highly developed, and they're all absolute mon- and they and then they're all absolute monarchies. Um, and this is something that's not widely known, or let's say celebrated, or or uh, or shared around the Western world. That these countries are cape. They they are highly developed. They have a very um, their government models are very uh, long term. So that means they they're very low preference. Uh, a philosophy of governments, they make investments 20, 30, 40, 50 years into the future. And as a result, these countries, I was, uh, I, I was in, you know, I was in um, Dubai the other day, I was in Amman the other day, and places like that. And uh, they're, they're very developed and they're very rich. People there, in average, are very, uh, very rich. And there's a lot of development and things are clean, things work there. Okay, they may have some strict rules, but uh, that's the ar- the uh, the gov- the the, ar- the, uh, the law there is I guess the whole the whole idea is like you, if you fuck about, you find out. And so people don't fuck about there. People just get on with their lives and because of that, they end up getting taxed a whole lot less and they end up making more money and they're able to have more children. So in those countries they have, uh, birth rates um, that are over 2.1, which is more than just more than just increasing the uh, than the replacing the population, but actually increasing the population. So then you look at other countries, other Western models, um, democratic republic models, and even constitutional monarchy models around the world, and you see that uh, our birth rates are are under 2.1. So we're not only just not replacing our population, we are shrinking our population, and I think that's uh, that's a telltale sign of of of, of how government models can actually help society and, and align us more with uh, with human nature, human action, and actually promote family values and actually promote um, natural, I guess, uh, more of a natural way of life, really. And and if anything, now if you add Bitcoin into that equation, it's just gonna it's just gonna make civilization finally progress to where it should be. And I think that with Bitcoin is that missing piece. In the in the whole equation of, of, of civilization progressing to the uh, to to something beautiful to Renaissance 2.0, I guess. I totally agree, especially on uh, on the last point uh, that Bitcoin is uh, the missing piece. Uh, actually, also one of the problem is the incentives. Also, that is uh, one of the problem of our uh, current system because uh, if uh, we spend more versus what we what the revenue are. Generally, politicians have uh, four choices. One is declaring default; they will never do. Second is uh, cut mm-hmm. the spending. If they cut the spend, they they, they say we we know we need 30% less uh, spending. They will never get votes. Third will be increasing taxes, and also, firstly, they will not do again for um, uh, political reason. But also, if you increase the taxes, then very likely. Uh, the, the amount of taxes paid is less because the economy shrinks. The only option is uh, printing money, and they always choose uh, printing money. Every time they do, they steal from the future to give to the present generation. So it's a very high time preference. Well, of course, and in monarchies, it's the it's uh, an absolute monarchies. It's all about trying to preserve what you have now, so your future generations are able to uh, enjoy the fruits. Of, uh, of the resources of your country, because if a monarch today starts to take too much from his people today, the chances are that uh, he won't have his family won't survive, and his. So that's why he has to have as low a time preference as possible in order for his family to survive years, millennia from now. So he has le- the least taxes, he takes the least from his people. And yes, but the only problem, I guess, the only argument you you can have against this is that every now and then you'll get a bad egg, you'll get a bad leader. So that's why if you have if you have a good governance structure and you can actually decentralize this family a little bit and have good uh, advisory syst- systems where you can actually change or mitigate the effects of a bad of a bad leader, but also thanks to something like Bitcoin, where you where the where if if that 
if absolute monarchies were based on on the on the Keynesian model of of money printing of of an expanding money supply, then they would uh, that would fail. But if it was based under a Bitcoin standard, then I believe that that uh, a lot of the uh, the effects of of a lot of the uh, the shortfalls of monarchies will be mitigated completely. So at the end of the day, you would have a very beneficial system where really the monarchy will actually just just act as a as a um, as a as cultural preservation as preserving culture, identity, and traditions. And I think that's a beautiful thing, really. So, yeah. Yes, it's very fascinating uh, how Bitcoin, uh, like people think we are here uh, uh, just for the money and uh, for the wealth and so on. That also could be also a, a portion of the personal interest, but is uh, connected with the civ civilization uh, uh, or the, the process of civilization, so new uh, renaissance, and how really Bitcoin can uh, could improve uh, anything and also any system from Keynes standard to uh, to a Bitcoin standard. Uh, another question I have, because due to your background, you, before moving back to Serbia, you were working in London mm -hmm. in finance. And it would be interesting to know how your colleagues or your circle of contacts in the finance world, in the hub, European hub of finance, uh, were perceiving Bitcoin, what they were telling you through these years. Yeah, that's a good question. It was uh, mixed, quite a lot of mixed uh, comments, most of them negative. Uh, when I first bought Bitcoin in 2017, I mean, I didn't really understand it that well, but other people in my company figured out that I bought Bitcoin. There's some other couple of people in the company that also got into Bitcoin and other cryptos as well, like I did. I got distracted by the cryptos. And so um, 2017 created that uh, the conversation of Bitcoin and other cryptos in our company, in like our company forum, um, uh, where people shared ideas and stuff. Every now and then someone would bring up Bitcoin and s something about Bitcoin. It would always be negative. And I remember having conversations as this is after then I became properly orange filled in 2020, 2021. I was still working for the company up until t end of 2022. And having conversations with individuals uh, about about Bitcoin and just seeing how little they actually knew about it. And I, it really goes down to what Sailor says. It's like you need to put those hundred hours in. And these people obviously hadn't put any time into understanding Bitcoin. And I had some very funny conversations where... Um, you know, talking about mining, they didn't really understand how mining works and they thought that mining was just wasteful for the, for the environment and all that. So, and I... Yeah, I told them, you know, with explained it, you know, using 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 reason and logic, how how you know that uh, that the need or the thirst of energy is actually what drives civilization forward, and that Bitcoin mining actually seeks the cheapest form of energy, and as a result, it's always going to drive um, electricity costs down. So that's actually a good thing for civilization, you know. All, so anyway, it was quite funny the conversations we had um, to the point where actually the team I used to work in. And the people that I was talking to, they were always very negative about Bitcoin. Uh, we, I worked in a, in a quantitative equities team where we used uh, algorithms to choose our stocks. Like it was about 90% quant and 10% human, uh, human runs. So like the, we, we use algorithms to, to choose our, our, our basket, our, our portfolios. And um, they later on, just as I was leaving, they decided to actually create a uh, a, a a Bitcoin strategy, meaning that uh, it, equities that were exposed to Bitcoin. So the guys, some of the guys, these intelligent guys, I would you know, I say bright guys in finance, who were very anti Bitcoin, were then told to start uh, creating um, funds uh, portfolios that would actually track companies that were that were uh, had some sort of exposure to bitcoin so obviously things like uh micro strategy or, or or those publicly traded bitcoin mining companies and yeah it was quite funny that that at the end of the day these guys they weren't so critical of bitcoin towards me anymore that the conversation stopped <laughs> uh but then by that point i'd left the company and i've kept in, in touch with a few other people but um we don't really talk about bitcoin um Every now and then I get like a friend from, because I left London completely. I left London in 2020, uh, right in the start of, of the whole COVID bullshit thing. And um, and 
when I came to Serbia, that really opened my eyes up to to a lot of things of how how the West was uh, was structured and how um, how actually brainwashed I was and how indoctrinated I was by the West. And actually, I was actually quite a lib- uh, little bit more liberal back pre twenty twenty, post twenty twenty. Thanks to COVID, thanks to moving to Serbia, I'd actually I guess not only have I become orange pill, but a bit of bit a bit of red pilled as well. And as a result, I had a lot of uh, have a lot of friends still in London in the UK, and I was in a lot of you know WhatsApp groups with people and stuff. And uh, you know, when I was expressing some of my views about things that were happening, you know, some uh, mandates and other things, you know, those uh, horrible tyrannical things that they tried to do it do to us in the twenty twenties and twenty twenty one or twenty twenty two, I was then uh, called the crazy one. The I was. Called, told I was had I you know I was I was radical uh, I had been radicalized by Serbs and stuff, and at the end of the day I felt like I'd been free I'd been um, liberated I felt like I'd been uh, like some spell had been taken off of me and I saw the world for what it was for what it is and it was actually quite revealing but it was actually quite sad that now when I speak to a lot of my friends back in London and stuff I can't really speak to them about a lot of the topics that we can speak about here openly. And even then, I've got to be careful what I speak about because there's a lot of stuff that happened over the last few years that were, you know, really uh, questionable. That I'm very, I have very strong views about that happened. But if I've got to be careful saying them in the open. Interesting uh, discussion then with your uh, colleagues, uh, ex-colleagues, let's say. Um, I think also one of the problem. Because also, as you said, you are working in a team with quantitative in finance. So these these people uh, they should be smart. You, I, I don't think you cannot you can be not smart and not working uh, for these companies. Uh, but the problem is uh, also, especially people working with good job, uh, they and they're quite smart. They have also a big ego. And as you said, every bitcoiner at one point he was anti bitcoiner anti-bitcoin sometimes if you are get exposed too much being against bitcoin is very hard to admit uh, that you were wrong and i think for the, for many of them uh, probably they will be the last one to admit uh, maybe even after people who are much less uh, less smart but they were not having such a strong position against bitcoin so it would be easier for them for the other one to understand to understand or to grasp bitcoin let's say yeah, that's 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 a good point. Egos in finance are not. We, we, there's we, there's no shortage of egos in finance, and I think a lot of uh, you know the whole that whole meme, the midwit me, meme. You get a lot of midwits in uh, in finance who. I maybe I was one a midwit, but now I like to see myself as a uh, as a below eighty IQ bitcoin maximalist you know <laughs> <laughs> i don't i i, I, I like that like, I, I think it's things, a, things have been yeah things are a bit more simpler that, that way i like it <laughs> <laughs> i think it's uh, not only that it's not only to be smarter requiring a requirement firstly also a curiosity uh, probably this uh, we we also kind of uh, become interested okay but then what is money it was never taught to us, so let's deep dive. Uh, for many others, uh, they are not curious. So they say, okay, money should be come from the government. It's inflation is stimulating. The, we need inflation to stimulate the economy. And this is for granted. Anything that attack this, uh, what they think is the base or the core uh, features of the economy, and they will never question. As you said also, the critics... Uh, they don't see it's clear that they didn't study Bitcoin so much. Uh, Sailor also said they are not really informed critics. I'm reading now some articles against Bitcoin. They are saying no intrinsic value, too volatile, it's not used enough a medium of exchange, uh, mm. consume too much energy. The, it's like basically, yes, basically, there's, there's no informed critics because exactly. if you understood Bitcoin, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be criticizing it exactly it's kind of embarrassing you don't feel even empa- yes em- it is and you don't feel empowered to have okay let's have a debate no you should study then these misconceptions are gone and then we can discuss about bitcoin it, it's because they have no idea of uh, the real devaluation of the us dollar and the euro because uh, the real number of uh, data of inflation is not the cpi and um, it's either they, at the end of the day, it's either for them and they trust the system or not, but they have been shaped by the system. So uh, they have to trust it. So there's no way, they, they don't see the problem. If they don't see the problem, they cannot value Bitcoin for what it is. Yeah. Uh, true. Uh, w- no, 
they don't they don't see the no they don't see like even the two percent target inflation um which is never the case inflation is always much higher even in in um let's say less more economic stable times at two percent if you just save if you save your money with the two percent inflation it means your your wealth will be halved in like 34 years but uh as you said that that's uh, inflation is not what it is it's uh, it's not even cpi inflation is much worse than than than, than, than they say it is that they also manipulate the the, way, the the numbers as well um the way the inflation basket of goods is is calculated and put, put together is 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 a joke is a farce See, it's changed even since the 70s. Apparently, inflation in the U.S. over the last few years, if it had the uh, the same um, calculations of the 70s, we, we would have had double digit or high, or uh, in, you know, in at least in the mid-teens inflation than 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 what it had. So, and, and that's the government uh, um, reported inflation. Yep. Yes, uh, Francesco, please go ahead. No, I mean uh, back then, um, it also started 2017. I mean. Uh, uh, if they were smart, uh, they would have uh, really smart. Uh, all uh, they would have uh, kept it in the portfolio uh, with the right amount uh, uh, according to the volatility. Uh, but they didn't want to trade the risk, and, and this was an, one uh, entry point. Was uh, the, the the sweet spot in the portfolio? Could have been an entry point for them. And the other one uh, would have been uh, the. Um, the, the the volatility, you know, the the, the edge mm. against the volatility, but uh, uh, well, yeah. it, at the end at the end of the day, they um they might have had a small point because that uh, let's say that in finance you would have a lot of the metrics that you use to to uh, to measure how a portfolio is uh, is performing, like sharp ratio. You need what's known as the um, as the risk-free rate so that's your risk-free investment which is usually like a three months or two year or up to two year bond but that, those aren't very much risk-free anymore so actually it falls apart the system just by that because over the last let's say six year, uh, five six years uh, the bond market has been doing terribly so the risk-free rate is actually uh, not the risk-free rate anymore actually they'll probably end up using um, uh, even uh, even less duration um, um, bond of even less than three months or whatever, and at the end of the day, that's subject to uh, to 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 inflation. So it's actually negative, um, whatever the inflation is at the time. So really, their models are absolutely screwed. So the sharp ratio is is, in my opinion, is uh, is not really uh, not really uh, useful anymore. It maybe was at one point when they, when there was slightly more economic stability in the fiat in fiat times, but now I'd say the risk free rate is. Is, is Bitcoin so that's the only risk free rate there's also the the, the, the possibility uh, to see Bitcoin uh, um, it's like Amazon you know, uh, it's, it's like uh, the postal market uh, over the internet you know so it's the money over the internet so the network effect the network effect could have been yes. another entry point for these people could have been it still is but, oh, and, but uh, and, 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 yeah, another thing is the volatility of Bitcoin. I think that's not a bug. That's also a feature. Um, Jimmy Song actually wrote a really good, and it's one of his newsletters, he wrote a really good piece about, about this, about how volatility is not a bug but a feature. Um, I wouldn't be able to describe how, what he said, but I, in my words, you know, it's, it's the fact is that the volatility is actually what puts, oh, puts off a lot of the, um, the current uh, people who are incentivized in the wrong way. They see the volatility and they see it's too volatile, so they're put off by that. Whereas for us, who are not lucky enough to be in the position of having tons of money to throw into different strategies and different uh, properties and stuff, which are illiquid assets or, or whatever around the world, we see the volatility and we're just, just saying, yeah, that's fine, we can stomach that. And, and we end up getting rewarded for it at the end of the day. So for our mental models, our actual risk, I mean, our actual financial models, which is a bit more in tune with our human nature, we can actually stomach that risk of volatility much better than what the, uh, the fiat uh, asset managers and all, all those people are, are, are saying, uh, are, are complaining that why Bitcoin is too volatile. So at the end of the day, it's, uh, that volatility is putting off a lot of, it's putting off a lot of um, institutional money going in 
And I think that's a good thing because it's giving us the the um, the smaller folk, the uh, the less well-off folk, a better chance of getting in, uh, getting their piece of um, of property of actual scarcity. And so it gives us more of a chance to uh, to to make things a bit more uh, uh, fair in this world. Yeah, I would say, of course, uh, the edging is uh, the, the volatility, um, the network effect are very good entry points. But in the end, uh, at the end of the day, if they don't, uh, if they make uh, some money and then uh, they don't grasp uh, the problem of the US dollar, or the euro, the devaluation, the inflation, uh, then they're going to sell. So at the end of the day, sooner or later, it's either they get it or not um, to make the most of it. Otherwise, uh, um, it's uh, not going to work. Uh, they will always keep thinking uh, in uh, in dollar terms. So, so they will uh, uh, ask Alessandro when it's time to sell and <laughs> is it going to want to work <laughs> that way. Yeah. I think uh, the ultimate uh, realization should be that uh, the US dollar is fiat is devaluing. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, uh, they cannot uh, place uh, winning back uh, winning back a long time T totally yes correct and uh, i think for for many for many of them uh, they also don't understand that volatility is also as you as the prince philip said is a is a feature and also during the history of monetization how can we think an asset going from zero to become a global store of value and then global medium of exchange in a straight line it's not even possible it will be always a, a first round of uh, believers and then it creates a bubble so it crashes then uh, it stabilizes then it goes up so there will be traders investors uh, but the the overall trend the long term also uh, lower time preference if we look at the price uh, at the average price of the last 50 weeks it's a line that is going always up only up so that's the real uh, uh, sort of value that's what i am trying to say and to i didn't yeah exactly but also at the end of the day it's uh if bitcoin is, isn't actually volatile it's the fiat system that it's valued against is volatile so it's that clashing point of what what how we value bitcoin against the fiat system that's what's volatile if we were in the bitcoin standard right now uh which a lot of people are living in right now and exchanging just a bitcoin that's not volatile at all so but it's getting there it's it's how we get to that Point and you know how we exchange our fiat into Bitcoin. That's just the vo that's the volatility really at the end of the day. Yes, uh, but this point uh, to discuss with people who don't know about Bitcoin, uh, they they go in tilt. Let's say they, they don't even get this point. Oh, <laughs> or... oh no, that's that's too far away. No, no, no. That's why I can discuss it with you guys yes, right now. But in general, totally. no, 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 no. no uh, yeah, you know, in fact, that's why I think it'll be, it'll be it would be so much better if we could price Bitcoin in uh, in Sats per, per per dollar and actually look at that instead of you know one Bitcoin uh, how much how much one Bitcoin's worth, and instead we can see how much how, how the Sats are going down versus a dollar, and so you see you know right now they're in they're in four digits it's like I don't know how many like two thousand whatever that's I haven't I was I mean see that I'm not in tune to to that price yet but you'll see it one day going to three digits and then you'll see it one day going to two digits and uh i think that's more of an act that's more of a, a compelling way of actually portraying the price of bitcoin because actually it shows you that uh it's not going up but uh, that fiat is not going up it's actually going down Yes, and uh, if we go in uh, in chats, maybe discussing about the 2000, uh, then we'd go to three digit. Uh, we will also have uh, more adoption because unfortunately people think, okay, 60,000, oh, it sounds a lot, it's too expensive. So I go to uh, exactly. a, a shit coin that is 0 0.03, I can, I can make more. <laughs> and it was like, they will, they will exactly, they will view exactly like how I used to, we used to view stocks and um, they will look at it like it's too, 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 too uh, highly valued. So they'll think, oh yeah, so it's going to crash because it's, uh, it's too expensive. It's like, it's what happened in the, in the, in the dot com bubble. Um, when when high valuations were in a big issue, and even before the two thousand and eight crash as well, when high valuations were an issue, and also high, high valuations are an issue right now. So, and people that say, yeah, we got to, you got you got to buy, you got to find uh, uh, less um, uh, le uh, stocks with uh, less less value, basically less uh, less with less high valuation ratios with with lower PEs, basically uh, uh, price to equity ratios. And at the end of the day, that's just bullshit when it comes to Bitcoin. And with Bitcoin, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 a completely different thing. It doesn't have 
Um, it doesn't have cash flows going into, inside it. It doesn't have a business model. It doesn't have re uh, revenues in that, in that respect. It's completely on its own. It's more like a commodity than anything else. And I think the way we should see it, price it, as I said before, we should uh, it, we should make a movement to make to, to try and price it differently, to try and price it sats per dollar. It'll be great. I think for this it will take maybe a, a while. We will need firstly yeah. <laughs> much more adoption before people uh, having the capability of moving sats per uh, per dollar. It's like that. It's like that meme you see, like uh, like uh, the bitcoins. How many bitcoins you used to buy the house with, like uh, like ten years ago versus like five years ago versus two years ago versus now, sort of thing, or like how much your groceries, how much um, a dollars would buy, like hundred dollars would buy in your in your in, in with groceries, and every time your basket gets smaller and smaller. So yeah, I think you know the visualization of, of the Bitcoin price could be quite you know the, right now with it going up, it's great because we understand it. But um, people, but I don't know. That's I think then that's another another, another conversation is the psychology. But maybe that's also what brings people in as well is that if they see Bitcoin going to hundred thousand, they're like, oh, I don't want to miss out. So that's what's going to bring in the next round of, of retail um, investors. Oh, that, that's a good point. We discussed also in the previous in other. Um... Uh, spaces like maybe 100, 100, 120k, it will be a trigger for many. And on one side, I think it will be so people who are against Bitcoin will be in much harder position to defend their position with Bitcoin at 120k, uh, as it was for us maybe to to discuss about Bitcoin when Bitcoin was 16k. I mean, I was convinced, but I was not talking anymore with anyone because I know that whatever I say. Bitcoin went from 70 to 16, uh, they will not listen to me. And the same will no. be once it is uh, <laughs> 120, 150K. They said uh, it's no intrinsic value. It's a bubble. But how can it be a bubble if it is after 15 years, every time uh, it, came, it came back from to life? So one side, the narrative against, I think, will diminish. And uh, secondly, it will be among the biggest assets of the world. So... I, I really also struggle. How can people well, get a position I, against? I think that no, yeah. Now I think I think given that uh, after the last halving, now it has a higher stock to flow ratio than gold, and now the um, now the price target is that yeah is that is that of the of how much gold is worth, which is about what about how many trillions? Is it twelve, thirteen trillion? I think that's the price, our next price target. It will be, I think, 15, uh, 16, 15 trillions because also gold Is, went up. Uh, yeah, of course, actually, that's true. Gold did go up. But I think already... Uh, they, for, for, yes. for, the, for, for, the first, for the first time in a while. <laughs> yeah, for 10 years, it was always... Uh, for 10 years, yeah, exactly. uh, continue 2012 and 2022, it was the same, uh, same price. Uh, good old steady gold. And uh, also compared to gold, once there was the ETF uh, in the gold, on gold, in like in eight years, it went up 500% or something like this. That's, that's true. That was like 2003 or four. I think yes. it, it was an ETF. And that, that, I don't know how many times exit as well. I think five or 600%. Yeah. And also, wow. despite gold being uh, known, um, Bitcoin is a very asymmetric information. So uh, Bitcoin is on top of this because it's not known. So uh, actually the potential is much uh, it's much higher for Bitcoin. That's a good point. Uh, one thing I say is um, for me, there is no topic, maybe in the world there's never be a topic where uh, the opinion of someone who didn't study at all something versus the opinion of, of someone who studied deeply Bitcoin, I think, I, for me, the trigger is 250 hours. is completely different. Uh, other topics, uh, for example, rocket science, are very hard. But it's not that people who didn't study rocket science have an opinion completely different from. They say they don't have an opinion. Uh, the problem is with Bitcoin people. They they don't know that they are ignorant. Uh, the real ignorance is not not knowing things, but thinking that you know while you don't know. Uh, in Bitcoin, I'm experiencing almost daily or in every conversation. Right, yeah, that's what's the problem with the with the fiat system is the the incentive, the uh, the education of ev of everything really. I mean, look at just read uh, Safety's book, the Fiat Standard, for and go, there, there's a whole chapter, a couple of chapters actually on 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 education. Where you can talk about fiat universities and fiat schools, and also 
fiat anything really fiat food i mean we can really just destroy how fiat's just destroyed everything of our, uh, of our lives and um and and <laughs> How Bitcoin actually will help to uh, to, to 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 reverse to, to correct those incentive structures and in turn actually you know we, you know that's why that's why as you said learning Bitcoin having those hundred plus hours of, of studying Bitcoin are, are, are is is really quite benef- I mean it's it's needed really much needed but I think as 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 Bitcoin education gets better and and as more books are available and more podcasts and more uh, ways of learning Bitcoin and the visualization of of of, of um, of, of uh, learning materials and all that, the Bitcoin gets better because when I first came into the space in 2017, there wasn't really much of this around. But then by 2020, 2021, uh, you know, I, uh, like the Bitcoin Standard and loads of other really good books were available that I could get my hands on. And now there's even an incredible books, selection of books available. And obviously, obviously Bitcoin Twitter is, is really handy as well, and memes as well, of course. But I think that uh, as 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 we, as time progresses and our, our children start to grow up, their understanding and their way, understanding of what Bitcoin is and how 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 it uh, how it's beneficial will there would be much, basically they're they're going to get this they're going to get Bitcoin much quicker than 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 um, than what than what we did, especially those especially um, uh, the the slightly older generations. I think millennials and and yeah, I think millennials were quite lucky because we we kind of lived in. I was I'm, I consider myself I'm I'm a millennial, born eighty two, so I kind of lived between the the analog and the digital, in between analog and digital, the transition. So I got to experience what VHS was, what what tape cassettes were, to what CDs were, to mic uh, uh, mini discs, to then getting an uh, getting a. Uh, um, an MP3 player to then you know getting DVD players and then getting anything to going everything online to the computers. I think we have a millennials maybe has a good, good uh, have a good capacity of taking on new information because we've seen we've seen how technology has progressed. I know I'm just a theory I'm, uh, I'm throwing out there, but I'm thinking the younger the younger generations as as, as we. As Bitcoiners, we are producing more children, and as as Bitcoiners who are who are parents, we will be teaching our children about the uh, the the history of money and the um, the value of Bitcoin. So there's going to be more of us, and there's going to be more of us uh, at a more at, at at a quicker rate. I agree, and uh, say uh, it cannot. It's not possible to unlearn Bitcoin. So once you learn, uh, there is no no way back. Correct. I also think, uh, as you said, that especially the, I'm also like upper millennial, the older um, decade, and I think we are in the best position. Uh, also, also seeing a many Bitcoiners generally, at least they are in their thirties. If they are uh, younger, there are some exception, uh, but uh, generally they are more interested maybe in tech, so they go in shit coins. They think that is the new replacement new Bitcoin. Secondly, they don't have so much savings and they are not focused on investing in money. While when you are in already early 30, middle 30, end of 30 is the time where you try to discuss about investment. Maybe you are interested in money. So for, for older millennials, uh, I think it's the, best, uh, it's the best chance for anyone. But for all the millennials, I think we are the luckiest one. I think so. Yeah. Also, the fact is that if we're just just about young enough to 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 stomach volatility, so that comes, you know, as to, to for us understanding Bitcoin. Yeah. Also, because of the path now from sixty-five, no, it's not financial advice. The path from seventy to one million, uh, it's clear that will happen, and it may happen soon in a few years. But then, from one million to two million, maybe will take uh, longer because then the market cap. So the the real uh, good time is now. Because as you said, also in 2017, there was no well, I, discussion. I, I, or... I, I'd I'd be I'd be surprised when market cap goes from one to from zero to one. That always takes much longer in fi- in finance. In uh, like Apple went from zero to one trillion in I don't know how many years, but then it went from one oh. to two trillion in just one one okay. and a half two years or something. Not even. Uh, yes. Uh, so maybe I don't know. But we should consider also the percentage from 70 to 1 million is um, oh, 50, 50 nicks, yeah, let's say, or 30 nicks. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, that didn't really, uh, that's, that's why I'm below 80 IQ in Bitcoin. <laughs> no, but it's true. <laughs> Once it's uh, 1 trillion, it will go to maybe 2 or 3, but uh, it will take, in percentage, it will be less. Like many people will join uh, with 3K when Bitcoin is 1 million. Okay. 
you lost the chance. Let's see. Yeah, then. So th- yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's always good. But to at, that, at that price, I think at that price, everyone is going to be getting in, so they don't want to. There's going to be fear of missing out, proper FOMO. So we we will uh, see how it plays out. I think uh, it's almost uh, one and a half uh, hour, or so maybe we can go towards uh, wrapping up. Firstly, I want to say uh, thanks a lot, uh, Prince Philip, to, to join our uh, podcast. It's been really a pleasure. If you have uh, some uh, closing remarks uh, for uh, the listeners. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on this podcast. I know it took a while to get to finally get it on here. <laughs> it's uh, seven, um, maybe remarks, are because, yeah, the, the reason why it took so long to get to, 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 to is because this time is usually like around bedtime for my children. And I think thanks to, you know, I would like to say something about, you know, my children in general, that thanks to Bitcoin and thanks to giving um, that, having my son six years ago and then my, my, my daughter, what, six, seven months ago, that uh, it's the reason, one, part of the reason why I became a Bitcoiner and I really wanted to change, well, I, I, not change things, but um, make, a, uh, make a better future for them. And the reason I understood Bitcoin was thanks to having children. I think. I just wanted to put a word out there for families, for parents, for for uh, for fathers, for mothers, that it's hard work, but it's it's the best work that that pays off is is and what Bitcoin is going to help us to have more children and to build a better future for them. And so, you know, I'm, I'm doing I'm not just doing this for myself. I'm doing this for for the future of, of of my children. And this is what something that's brilliant that Bitcoin is intergenerational wealth. It lowers your time preference. It's um. It makes you understand the, the it makes you understand the, the the things that matter in life, and it's something that's really enlightened me to a lot of other beautiful um, uh, studies as well. Like you know, I've, I've understood, I got into studying more about politics, economics, Austrian Austrian economics that is, of course, and yeah. So it's just wanted to yeah say that you know the Bitcoiners also have met some of the most amazing Bitcoiners out there some of the most amazing people when I've traveled uh, to conferences and, and around the world when I've tried to orange pill people and yeah it's it's a beautiful community and it's a growing community and, and I'm really just so happy to be a part of it so thank you everyone thanks for your uh, great remarks uh, and uh, it's also very very touching and uh, when uh, I hear this uh, one side is making me sad uh, thinking that the majority of people think that Bitcoiners are the same of those who talk about Solana, Cardano, Dogecoin and the rest. It's, uh, <laughs> we, we, we become uh, uh, philosophical with so much knowledge on economy, energy usage and so on. And still the majority is thinking about crypto. But I want to know we're still we're still gr- we're still grouped into the NFT Solana crew. Yeah, we don't like that. It's but that's that's part of the part of the part of the fun. Yeah, more uh, more we will go on, uh, the more we will uh, decouple, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> will you be in, uh, Definitely. in Prague? I forgot to ask. For the... No, um, I'm going to take, I'm actually going to, because I was in Prague last year and I highly recommend it. Prague was an amazing conference. I had a really good time. It was a time I was on stage with uh, one of my heroes, Safety Namus, um, talking about on a panel talking about low time preference and i found that very surreal because he was the one who introduced me to the topic of low time preference and now i'm on the panel talking about it with him in front of uh in front of a uh, a big crowd so that was quite surreal for me I, I almost felt out of place um so i highly recommend prague it's an amazing conference that got it's really well organized good good um good speakers and a really cool city but i'm actually going next week and this weekend i'm going to another conference a smaller conference because i want to support this one in bulgaria in sofia organized by plamen which is plamen plamen uh so it's a bitcoin conference in uh, in bulgaria this weekend much smaller but we have some good speakers there i think like svetsky is going to be there daniel prince uh, Alan Farrington because he lives there and he, he married Bulgarian and uh, yes yeah, so I'll be there this weekend so sadly I'm not going to Prague this week uh, next the following weekend um, as a family it's difficult now with the second child to travel <laughs> okay. which is a good thing because I like being with my family but at the same time I do like traveling and going to meet, meet other Bitcoiners but you have the balanced life Definitely. I w- remember I was there uh, last year in Prague I will be also there in, uh, in 10 days and I remember your uh, um, space your uh, panel with uh, safety it was gr- great talk oh nice thank you 
Francesco, any closing closing remark from you? Yes, it was amazing uh, having had this talk uh, with uh, Philip because um, of uh, his uh, unique background, uh, his insights uh, given also by uh, his position and uh, the financial uh, job he has done in the past that leveled up uh, the conversation by a lot. I would say that uh, uh, closing remark is that uh, we. I uh, have a unique advantage here in Bitcoin talking at these prices about uh, uh, such deep co concepts uh, and uh, um, which are going to bring about uh, a very, very precise understanding of this asset and knowledge uh, at the time of information is uh, value. So um, it's, it's uh, really uh, compelling to study Bitcoin and to understand it uh, for the, to, to improve actually the, your life. Um, the, the fiat system is, is built uh, on, unfortunately, on violence uh, and uh, because uh, through inflation and uh, also bugged by warfare. So Bitcoin uh, is a, a paradigm shift. It brings about uh, peace uh, through math. Uh, it uh, um, unravel uh, uh, all, all of the um, uh, broken uh, concepts of uh, the uh, incumbent uh, system uh, by allowing a, a more transparent uh, and uh, a way to to store value and uh, also one day to, to transact. Um, so uh, I just want to, to to stress the importance of the uh, study of, of the this. Uh, asset and technology uh, for the future and to, for our life. And uh, thank you again, uh, um, Philip. And uh, I think uh, I, I, we're going to meet him. Uh, it will be Lugano at uh, the conference, I believe. Thank you all uh, for uh, the night. Th thanks, Francesco. Uh, I will think that I would say the, uh, the same was it's been a great pleasure. We have already 11 episodes at the we are we are thinking to provide we're providing a great uh, great content for the listeners and also we really enjoyed the conversation uh, enjoyed the uh, uh, personally i stopped to debate on bitcoin with with people who didn't study enough i say okay if you want to debate uh, you have to study and then we debate if not is me educating you uh, otherwise uh, there is no uh, there is no debate so it's great going uh, in, in this direction uh, we are sure also the listeners have uh, grasp a lot of uh, many insights uh, from uh, Prince Philip. And th thanks again, and uh, see you in the one of the next uh, episodes. We have the next one coming up tomorrow with uh, James Lavish. Thanks again, Philip. That's great. Hey, have a nice thank evening. You. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be on here. Great talk. Take care, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Appreciate it. Bye, all.